Hi everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Michelle Wei, and we're here with yeah. Pei Katran. Hi, Pei. Hi. You were on yesterday, so yeah. today is my first day with you all. Um, how was yesterday? Yesterday was good. It went really well. Yeah. So I'm eager to see if there are any people here from yesterday watching again. Yeah. Um, so if you were here yesterday, I'd love to yeah. hear from you. Yeah. Hello, Daryl from um, Joburg in South Africa. So today um, is a little bit different. Yesterday you guys talked about um, travel photography, which mm -hmm. you are very well known for. Um, mm -hmm. Today we are going to be talking about landscape photography. So um, that should be fun because I know you and I haven't personally talked about your landscape photography. Yeah, so it'll be my all. first time <laughs> going through your <laughs> landscape photography mm -hmm. with you. And um, we have a pack schedule today. Um, let's take a look at the schedule um, after pay. So this week on Adobe Live, uh, yesterday was travel, like we said, and so right now we're talking about landscape with pay. After this, we have Ty Tyson Waitley with Tiny Atlas Quarterly again, um, hosted by Ashley Batts, who was a wonderful host this past winter and now um, is coming back to host. And then after Tiny Atlas Quarterly with Tyson, we have Tiny Atlas Quarterly with Dan Tom. So um, full schedule. You guys are like a San Francisco powerhouse of photographers. Yeah, Tyson moved away though. Tyson's oh. in, he's in New York now. I did not know that. And um, look at everyone joining from uh, Portugal, Germany, um, Ontario. Hello everyone. Um, if you could just shout out in the chat pod and let us know where you're from. Um, and maybe some of Pei's landscape photography will cover your part of the world. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't want we'll to overpromise. <laughs> don't don't overpromise. Don't over, over okay. yeah. um, maybe. So that is our schedule for today. And uh, we're going to do a challenge as well um, later in the program. But first, we have a chat and win. And um, I don't know if you guys want to cue the, the chat and win visuals. I'm sure. Ah, okay. Let's cover the, the challenge first. So yesterday we had edit a travel photo. Today, on day two, the challenge is to batch edit your photographs. So um, if everyone would go into the challenge tab of the Adobe Live screen, you'll see the challenge details. And um, we invite you to batch edit three photos. We have five provided from Paco's trip to Canada. So our theme is Discover Canada. Um, hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Paco just ha took some amazing Canada photos. So um, pick three photos of that and then within Lightroom CC um, there is a batch edit tool. It's very simple. You just copy control C um, your photo your photo edits, go to the next photo and paste control V that, those edits onto that photograph. So I uh, will go through them with Pei. Um, um, Pei's discerning eye. Um, and my less discerning eye will go through and <laughs> select your <laughs> photos. Um, and then after the challenge, um, we'll have. Is there no chat and win? Do I not have to talk about chat and win? Yeah, that was the. Do you show them the explorers? Can you show them the they Oh, right here. Sorry, guys. It's my first day back from vacation, so I'm a little bit slow. Um, we have a chat and win, and you'll see the fireworks go off just like um, every other chat and win and you will be able to win this Everyday Explorers uh, by Christine Heron, who was one of our Adobe Live, Adobe Creative Residents last year. Did you get one of these? No. Okay, so only, only the winners of Chat and Win can get I this. I know, so I'm gonna chat today. Yeah. <laughs> does that count? <laughs> they, said, they said it does if I wanted, but it's um, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, without further ado, I want to introduce Pei um, again for those of you who did not join yesterday. Um, Pei Katran is one of my favorite photographers, so thank you so much for being here. It is um, such a treat to be able to go through your work with you. And um, today we will be going through Pei's landscape photography. Um, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about yourself uh, for those that are joining for the first time sure. today. Sure, yeah, and um, I don't think I really did a, a full proper introduction yesterday anyway, so um, I think it would probably be nice to share a little bit. but. Um, my name is Pei, and I'm a, a photographer based here in San Francisco. I primarily do travel and commercial work. 
Um, I, my background is not in photography, even though I've been a photographer for about 17 years. Um, I was an elementary school special ed teacher for 10 years. Yeah, so you're very patient, this woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did, I was worked as a teacher and then at the same time was building a photography business on the side and was doing a lot of like, I had, I was building like a wedding and portrait career basically mm -hmm. and getting hired by the people around me. And what ended up happening is that Instagram came around and through that I was able to build an audience and then reach clients that are um, sort of spread far and wide around the world, which enabled me to do the type of photography that I really felt passionate about, which was more of the travel stuff. Yeah. So um, I've had a very long photography career, but um, more recently it's been sort of helped along, you know, I, I was able to go full-time freelance thanks to Instagram and the jobs mm -hmm. that I was getting through that. And um, I've done a lot of work on mobile over the years, um, but still shoot with sort of a, a bunch of different cameras, which I'm, I'm sure we'll kind of touch upon at, over the course of this discussion today. Yeah, it is um, always so interesting to hear your story about mobile photography because you were really one of the first photographers that was shooting on mobile um, to use Instagram and mobile photography as a way um, to share photography as an art mm -hmm. um, and not just capture a moment and share it. Yeah, yeah, I think that one of the reasons why I got noticed by the Instagram team was because, you know, I was on it early on like like a number of people, but mm -hmm. I think I was one of the first couple people who was starting to use it as actually like an actual artistic tool. Yeah. So sharing nice artistic images versus just snapshots of the day and, and stuff like that. But if you go way back, you'll see all sorts of stuff that's yeah. You know, less representative of me as an artist and more representative of like, you know, that snapshot side of me. Yeah, I think that's true for anyone's yeah. Instagram feed. Um, so, hello, Aaron, um, Tim, Steve um, from Seattle. Um, would love to hear more from everyone in the chat pod um, about um, how you guys use mobile photography because that's what we will be going um, over tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but without. Um, any further delay, let's jump into your work. We do have one question. Erin Varga wants to know, how long do we have for the challenge? So, um, how long total from the start do we have for the challenge? Sorry, from right now, about an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, okay. So you have, so if you get started early, you have an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and uh, about when we have 30 minutes left in the um, segment, we will go through them. So. Um, I would say the early birds have an advantage. So go ahead and get started. Thanks, Aaron. Um, okay. So um, sh shall we jump sure. into your work? I mean, it's kind of hard to know where to start. I feel like um, I'm. I'm gonna say it now that I'm not. Um, I'm certainly not like landscape photography is not what I'm known for. It's not necessarily even one of my strengths as a photographer. I doubt that. Um, <laughs> I, but I feel like, especially as a travel photographer, yeah. one of the reasons why that appeals to me is because you have to be good at so many different types of mm -hmm. photography. Just kind of the way, um, I kind of think this about um, wedding photography as well. I did wedding photography, um, a lot of wedding photography for probably like three or four years. Mm -hmm. um, and. I decided it wasn't what I wanted to pursue a career in, but I did enjoy it because it really helped to push me as a photographer. Yeah. Um, I think it was great because you have to, you know, as a wedding photographer, you have to be great at portraits and event photography and landscape and macro and low light, and, low light yeah. and just all different types of photography. And you have to think on your feet and do it really quickly under pressure. Mm -hmm. So I really kind of credit that. Um, experience as a wedding photographer as you know what made me a much stronger photographer and then that's kind of transferred into travel photography as well mm -hmm. um, really the idea that you know you have to photograph food and you have to photograph landscapes yeah. and um, you know do street photography do all these different types of photography um, and that's probably why I, I love travel photography so much because I I don't have to choose one or the other um, so in terms of my actual landscapes, I have just like, I just like pulled together a bunch of stuff and, yeah. and it's kind of separated out, you'll see here. Um, so for those of you side, yeah. um, who are not familiar with what we're showing on the screen, this is Lightroom CC, the new Lightroom CC um, that we launched last 
October at Max. Um, and for those that are familiar with the former Lightroom, now called Lightroom Classic, this looks um, much different. It's a, a simplified user experience. Um, and every photo that Pei has in here is available um, to edit and share on desktop, which she's on now, um, her mobile device, which you use a lot for your mm -hmm. photography, as well as web if she's not at her computer. Um, so this is Lightroom CC. And then before we jump into this, sure. um, I wanted to ask you um, along the lines of what you were talking about. So when you are traveling, what is your kit like? Um, do you? Oh, that's a good question. And yeah. I think we had the, that question from Rachel as oh, well. Good. You're great. Yeah. Looking at I, the chat I'm, I'm experienced now. Yeah. <laughs> I've done this I'm for the yeah, a whole day now. Um, okay. Yeah, so Rachel asks, um, how many cameras do you carry with you, carry with you when you're on assignment? Or when so, you travel? Yeah, um, that's, that's a great question. I So I always capture on my mobile phone, and that kind of addresses the question that Mike has about you know what is mobile. So I always capture on my mobile phone, um, which is usually an iPhone, unless I'm um, testing out another camera. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to the mobile phone, I usually have, I like to only have one other camera. I feel like I get really bogged down if I have too many cameras to choose from. Yeah. So in an ideal world, I'm only capturing on two different cameras. So um, usually it's like phone and a Leica Q if I want to travel light and don't want to have a lot of gear. Yeah. Um, if and I both know. Both of those are 28. Right? Yeah. About 28, yeah. right? So it's kind of working with the same focal length. Yeah. Um, which is not always great. I think it's just I opt for one or the other depending on what which one does better at a yeah. certain thing. Um, if I know that I need more flexibility with lenses, then I um, usually have a DSLR and then other lenses with me. Um, but at the same time, I also know that I, I'm not the type who likes to stop and change lenses. I'm, yeah. it, it just like totally interrupts my flow and um, I find myself just like saying, forget it, I'm not gonna use it. Even yeah. if I have it with me, I don't wanna change it. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing more recently is if I am if I know that I'm okay leaving mobile behind or just keeping it in my bag or in my pocket, then I have um, a DSLR, a Nik I, I shoot Nikon, so I have a Nikon D810 right now, mm -hmm. um, and I have on it like an 85 millimeter lens. Oh, wow. And then I have the Leica Q, like one on each shoulder. Yeah. So I have like a wide lens option and mm -hmm. a telephoto, a more telephoto option. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm okay with 85 being sort of the the outer reach of my focal limit or yeah. focal length because the other lenses are, you know, beyond that it's just like so heavy. Yep. Um, and I'm definitely of the mindset that, that lighter is better and yeah. if it's heavy enough to be a deterrent. Then don't do it. Then don't do it. It's yeah. like not even worth it for mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah, so, so that's generally um, what I carry. For, um, I would love, f for everyone in the chat pod, hi Kathy and hi, um, someone just joined from Quito, very cool. Um, I, how many, um, if you guys would just give us a shout out, how many of you are uh, more novice photographers? Because I have a lot of novice photographer questions. Um, for example, <laughs> What, what would you shoot with a 28 millimeter focal length, which is what your Leica Q is, mm -hmm. versus an 85? Like what? Sure. Um, yeah. okay. I think these are things that beginners get very overwhelmed with. Yeah. And um, so what would you shoot with a 28? What would you shoot with a 85? And then what do you usually bring um, when you know you're going to have landscapes mm -hmm. um, to shoot? Good question. So I think that I feel like when I was learning, um, when I was learning photography and would go out and shoot, I heard I heard somewhere or read somewhere that for a lot of landscape stuff, like white is great for landscape because you can fit yeah. so much more in, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I got actually one of my favorite lenses, which I do carry depending on um, what I'm sh what I'll, what I'll be shooting. Um, one of my favorite lenses is actually the the Nikon like 14 to 24. Oh yeah. So it's ultra mm -hmm. wide, mm -hmm. and I I think I first got that when I got first got that years ago. I went out and I shot with it, and I shot this like you know wonderful landscape. I can't remember what it was, but um, I realized then that the wide was like so wide that everything was really, really small, and it sort of, it almost lessened the impact of that photo in the yeah. end. So 14 was way too wide, 
um, for a lot of things, unless it was something like I'm standing at the base of Half Dome and I want to get everything, and I want to get everything yeah. in, right? I mean, of course, yeah. then it's a, a very different situation. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that um, you know, even a, a 24, I shoot on a 2470 um, yeah. regularly as mm -hmm. well. That's like a good walk around lens. Yeah, that's a, a great yeah. walk around lens. Like if I had to only choose one lens, it might. In, I don't know, it might be the hat. I'm, I'm really in love with my 85 recently, so I've yeah. been kind of um, defaulting the, to that. But 24 feels really good for like a, a, a the wide end mm -hmm. of the spectrum. Um, and then what I would use, um, so like if you want like a, a, a landscape photo that fits in more of the scene, something mm -hmm. like a 24 or the Leica with the 28, yeah. um, or the iPhone is really good at sort of yeah seeing the whole mm -hmm. picture, unless you're in a place where you can't back up any further and you still want to capture more. So yeah. um, for me, I often choose the ultra wide um, or like, you know, I shoot with the moment lens on iPhones yeah. as well. Yeah, I was just going to say someone in the um, chat pod also, Joel uses his moment lens for his yeah. Android, yeah. Um, which is a great alternative because yeah. um, if you want flexibility on like, just your smartphone. Yeah, um, I think that's a great option. I I love moment lenses, and the one that I use most often is the 18 millimeter, the wide, so mm -hmm. that I can, if I'm in a small space, um, uh, I can and I can't back up any further. I can capture more of the room with it. Um, I love shooting ultra wide for things like inside cathedrals and churches yeah. and travel tra 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 get traveling. Yeah, it's like widely, hugely distorted, yeah. but I kind of like it. So. Yeah while a traditional architecture photographer would kind of look down upon that yeah. kind of work where your lines aren't straight, mm -hmm. um, it works for me and sort yeah. of my artistic interpretation of what that space is. I find when I'm traveling, I will just panic and use the widest. Oh, really? um, because yeah. I'm like, shoot. Just in case. Yeah, yeah. I want to get every detail. And then I go home and edit, and I have distorted lines. But we yeah. can cover that um, yeah. as in the editing portion of this. Yeah, and I think that... Um, it's, it really depends, your lens choice depends on what what within the landscape or situation you're yeah. shooting, right? Um, I, I love the 85 for um, capturing portraits yeah. be, or anything where I want a really shallow depth of field. Yeah. It's an 85 um, for the Nikon, it's a 1.4. Um, Canon has a 1.2 that's wow. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I have the 1.4. And 1.4 and 1.2 um, pay is referring to the aperture, so the mm -hmm. amount of light that the camera is letting in. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, and then the the smaller the number, so it usually goes from like one four, like f one point four to f twenty two or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger the number, or sorry, the smaller the number, the lower the number, like yeah. one point four, the bigger the aperture, the yeah. more light is let in. And then the result of that is that you have a shallower depth of field. So I can capture, say, a portrait of you at one point mm -hmm. four and all the stuff behind you will just kind of fade into yeah. blurriness, which is a, like a really wonderful effect. Um, it's hard to get on, on um, an iPhone. It's hard to get an iPhone, but now that they have portrait mode, it mm -hmm. actually, it helps to, I mean, it, it's mimicking that in yeah. software. So it's actually mm -hmm. more and more impressive as time goes on and yeah. as they iterate on it. Um, but the, um, if you're wanting to capture something within your scene, like say, flowers in the foreground of this like wonderful landscape scene, um, shooting it on something like an 85 with a shallower depth of field, but allowing for enough of the detail of the background to show through is yeah. kind of a nice effect. It's mm -hmm. a nice thing to do as well. So it doesn't always have to be super wide, everything in focus. Yeah. You can vary it depending on what within your scene you're trying to capture. Um, thank you. That was a really yeah. great um, Focal length 101. Yeah. And if you, if anyone has any follow up questions, please chime in in the chat pod. Um, I, I, Mike Romano has a question that I also mm -hmm. wonder for you. Do you find that the mm -hmm. mobile photos are um, high enough quality to print? Mm -hmm. um, because while portrait mode is mimicking that that shallow depth of field that you get with an 85, mm -hmm. sometimes I find that it when you blow it up, it's not quite yeah. what you want. Well, I think that. So portrait mode is still one of the newer iPhone features, yeah. I would say, the newer iPhone camera features. So um, they're definitely still improving on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
if you're if you find yourself shooting in portrait mode a lot, my recommendation is that you take a number of photos of the same thing, mm -hmm. because sometimes it works better than others. Yeah. Just based on how it's reading that depth information in your scene. So I'd recommend taking a couple yeah. photos, um, but sort of be beside you know aside from the the portrait mode part mm -hmm. of it. Um, I, I teach a lot of iPhone photography classes and almost all of them involve this like element of printing. Um, and I have definitely printed and seen my students print um, 11 by 14s with absolutely no problem. I think I've, I've definitely seen, especially with newer iPhones, like the iPhone, like the 8 and 10, um, I've seen prints at 11 by 14 where I can't tell, like I can't tell and I have a very discerning eye. Mm -hmm. um, I can't tell if it's an iPhone shot or a DSLR shot. Wow. Which is um, impressive. I will have to plug Lightroom for a minute mm -hmm. here sure. because the um, disadvantage of shooting in the native camera um, in portrait mode is that you aren't capturing a raw photo. And I think someone, Joel, Joel is on it. He called this <laughs> out as well. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Um, within Lightroom Mobile on your phone, um, I'm using it more and more in my uh, photography, especially um, when I travel, I'll use the capture, the camera mode in Lightroom Mobile because you can shoot a raw photo, which um, gives me more headway mm -hmm. because I'm also a novice photographer and it lets me edit um, in post more because there's just more data there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I, I would also say that when you're shooting on your phone, you have a little bit less flexibility overall um, in terms of like I guess how much image you crop out of your scene yeah. to get your final shot. Mm -hmm. So um, I always talk to people about um, like not zooming in too much, like just no, relying on, feet. yeah, use your feet um, mm -hmm. and rely on the, like the optical zoom that the iPhone has. Mm -hmm. So either just the full wide or, you know, if you have the telephoto tapping in to use that two times mode, mm -hmm. the telephoto focal length. Those are going to be your clearest focal lengths. Yeah. Anything in between those is going to be an optical zoom, and it's going to be a lower quality. Yeah. And then once you have the, the image that you've taken, mm -hmm. um, to maintain the best image quality, especially if you want to do something like print, you don't want to crop too much of it off, because mm -hmm. then you're just stretching the pixels and working with yeah. far less data. Um, yeah. um, and we will, for um, thank you, everyone, for all of your mobile photography questions in the chat pod. Tomorrow, is dedicated to mobile photography, mm -hmm. so we'll get much more in depth. Um, but this is great conversation and, and um, good transition into landscape photography sure. because, um, you know, we, as we get started looking at this photo, um, what are the barriers for landscape photography on mobile versus your DSLR? Um, I mean, I well, I mean, <laughs> I think that's that's like a that's a I feel like that's a really big question because I yeah. uh, also feel like I like a lot of my landscape images that I would take on my phone better than mm. the ones I take on my DSLR. And, and that really is honestly because um, of things like apps that allow you to sort of mimic the slow shutter effect mm -hmm. um, that are sort of much more cumbersome to do um, in camera on a DSLR. Yeah. Have so. you tried with this last mm -hmm. release of Lightroom. Oh, we have a tech preview on Lightroom Mobile. Um, so mm -hmm. everyone that um, has a subscription, um, check out Lightroom Mobile. There's a tech preview only for those that are um, paying for now, but mm -hmm. um, to mimic lawn, expo lawn exposure. Yeah, I've, I've tried it. Um, not out in the field. I've just tried it for like demo purposes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, and it's just a preview, so it's yeah. gonna get better. So. Yeah. Um, Try it. I mean, I would love to hear your feedback. And then for everyone that's um, watching mm -hmm. and um, tries it, please do send us feedback because mm -hmm. it is a tech preview. Yeah. Um, so um, do you want to, should we answer any of those questions? Yeah. Um, let's start up top. Melissa asks, do you, um, do you teach on any online platforms? <laughs> Um, well, <laughs> this week has been a very busy, busy week um, in the um, on the internet for me personally because I have You're blowing um, up the interwebs, I'm, I'm like <laughs> taking over the internet with my face this week. Yeah. But I have um, classes that are just being released on Creative Live, and they are actually 
um, mobile photography classes where I talk about shooting, editing, and then Instagram and social media. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in that, especially since we've been talking about mobile stuff, um, then you know you can have a look on Creative Live. Those things, those classes will be available, you know, permanently basically. But they're debuting this week. Cool. I have yet to check them out. Oh, they're debuting this week. They're so. debuting this week. I yeah. haven't even seen them yet. So. Oh, okay. I don't know if they're any good. Yeah, hopefully so. Hopefully um, you guys have the insider scoop. Yeah. Um, and then Evaloni asks, do you shoot in manual when doing travel photography? Um, if not, what's uh, more effective to shoot in? Yeah, I so I shoot all manual all the time, basically. That's just mm -hmm. um, what I elect to do as a photographer because I feel fairly confident in my, um, in my ability to sort of read a scene as I approach it and kind of roughly estimate what settings I'll need. Um, but it's actually um, shooting manual for those of you who have yet to take that step is actually sort of less daunting than than you expect it to be um, because in general the way that I do it is that I, I read when I walk into a scene I read the light and I know roughly what ISO I want mm -hmm. my camera to be at and I know what effect I'm trying to achieve so whether I want it to be like a shallow depth of field or like a really deep depth of field. So I already know based on that what I want my aperture to be. So ISO is set, aperture is already set, and then all I have to do, especially if I'm shooting on a DSLR, is take a meter reading inside when I'm shooting. Um, so read the light meter and then just, you know, on a Nikon it's the little thumb dial to sh uh, shift your shutter speed. Mm -hmm. But it's literally like, all I have to do is adjust shutter speed, Yeah. period. So I'm shooting manual, but all I'm changing from shot to shot is the shutter speed, unless the whole lighting situation changes. Yeah, unless you change locations. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. Um, Avaloni, I will have to tell you that I shoot aperture mode mm -hmm. um, because I'm my weakness is knowing what shutter speed. So maybe yeah. you can teach me later. Yeah, and, and it's just kind of understanding the, like the, how to read the light meter mm -hmm. properly and then how to like, compensate when you know the scene is like a little darker or a yeah. little lighter and how you want to balance that. Yeah. Um, and there, there is nothing wrong with shooting an aperture priority. Um, yeah. I think that, that that's certainly like, if you're not going to shoot manual, I would recommend aperture priority. And I would also recommend understanding exposure compensation. Because yeah. that's, that's key, really. Mm -hmm. um, so honestly, I shoot my Leica Q. I shoot an aperture priority, but I feel like I, it feels exactly like shooting manual because my little dial on the side is mm -hmm. adjusting exposure compensation. Uh, so I'm doing exactly yeah. what you're doing and just ex adjusting exposure compensation to get what I want. Um, so great, que great question. Thank you, Avaloni. And then Joseph asks, uh, Lightroom Mobile is new to me. Um, are there tutorials that can be viewed? So yes, yeah. um, they just filmed a bunch of them. Yeah, so I have um, one of my classes at Creative Live is um, a tutorial on Lightroom Mobile, but I know that even on the Adobe websites yeah. themselves, I mean, there there's tons of resources online. If you yeah. just kind of search for Lightroom tutorial, maybe do Lightroom CC tutorial, yeah, um, and look at the date to make sure it's like a more recent version. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot online, you know, through Adobe's channels as well. Yeah, so thank you, Tim, for adding in that link. Um, that is yeah. a link to our Lightroom CC tutorials within the Adobe site. And then um, uh, Joseph wants to. T <laughs> Joseph dis disagrees. Not sure. I, I like the comments that a phone is better to shoot landscape. So sure. um, we'll get we'll get into that as yeah. we start looking at photos because yeah. I'm sure you have some that are phone mm -hmm. and some that are DSLR. Yeah, so, and I was um, speaking from like my own personal. That's like my own personal opinion. That for me, I like shooting landscapes on yeah. an iPhone, but we'll definitely talk about it. Yeah. Um, and then I think we just have a, a, a bunch of comments. Um, hello, Georgie May, thank you for joining. And then um, Shani wants to know, um, so she mostly edits in Photoshop. Lightroom is most effective. Um, so I think your question, Shani, is whether Lightroom is more effective compared to Photoshop. Um, do you want to answer that so it's not a marketing pitch for me? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, I guess if the question is, you know, should I work in Photoshop or should I work in Lightroom? Mm -hmm. um, so my, my answer to that is always that Lightroom is a tool that Adobe developed specifically with photographers and photography in mind, whereas Photoshop is a tool that um, can do a lot more than just tweak your images. So if you want to do image overlays and mm -hmm. composites and layering and add text and um, do like really crazy edits, I think that um, 
you know, Photoshop is definitely the tool for you. It's a tool meant for designers yeah. and illustrators and all, all different things. Um, but, sorry, I'm gonna get cut off. <laughs> yeah. um, but as photographers, Lightroom offers sort of the most control if you are like me and all you wanna do is basically make your photos look better. Yeah, Lightroom is the go-to tool for photographers uh, because it doesn't just edit, it manages your photos, you can um, access them anywhere, and then you can share. Mm -hmm. um, but as everyone can see, the fireworks <laughs> are going off. It is yeah. chat and wind time. Um, so it's very self-explanatory, um, just, chat in the chat pod and um, be eligible to win this Christine here in Everyday Explorers kit. Um, and for those that weren't in the beginning, Christine was one of our uh, talented creative residents last year and she's gone off to do wonderful things, but you have a chance to win um, this Everyday Explorers kit. So um, say, pardon me. Oh, we're gonna play a video very quick, quickly. Thanks Paco. And we're back. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating in chat and win. Oh, Melissa Kip, win, win, win. <laughs> I love seeing everyone's comments during chat and win. Um, and our winner is oh oh Saul Lipman. Congratulations, Saul Lipman. This kit is coming your way. Um, Saul, where are you in the world? <laughs> He looks Everyone very looks happy. So nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Sal looks excited, and we will. Uh, California. California. So this kit is coming uh, from you from not very far, and thank you for participating in chat and win. Um, should we, like, we can, I keep saying let's get let's into the photos, at, let's and then look I keep, photos. and yeah. then I keep asking you qu questions. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's okay. There are a lot of questions come, that have come mm -hmm. in, which is great. Um, so what I have is just like this whole kind of selection of, for the most part, they're like there's like one or two in here that are edited, but um, for the most part, unedited sort of landscapey type images. Um, if we want to go through like, um, where do you want to start? How, how should we start this? Um, what is, what are your favorite landscapes to capture? Is it water, I, mountains, I love trees? shooting, I love shooting water. I mean, let's I, start with, I live, let's start with yeah, water scenes. I live on the water. So, oh, yeah. um, I don't live right on the water, but I live in California, very close to the water. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have, you know, one of the reasons I have this folder, um, these are shot right here in the Bay Area, um, in Pacifica off one of the piers. Um, but it was, you know, Mavericks one year, and that's when the waves are basically huge. So mm -hmm. you kind of, always, as photographers, you know, to go down there and kind of um, wait for the big waves, basically. Yeah. Um, so I what kinda, time of year is that? It's usually winter, so like January, oh. February. Mm -hmm. They usually announce when Mavericks, it's a big surfing competition, so um, they usually announce that, like, within like a week or 10 mm -hmm. days of the event happening because they are reading all the like title ah, charts and cool. stuff like that. So it's different, it's a different day and time every, you know, it's a different date every year. Yeah. Um, but I included all of these um, because these were, you know, I went there and I shot probably several hundred photos mm -hmm. um, because they're like moving waves and you want to capture different parts of the movement. Mm -hmm. So what you end up doing is, you know, shooting burst um, um, to capture like the whole movement and then kind of mm -hmm. picking out the piece that you want. Um, and shooting burst is? Just shooting like high multiple speed. Multiple photos. Mu like yeah. multiple sh sh uh, shots in a row. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I essentially had this folder that was like hundreds of photos big. And what I wanted to talk about here was, um, is this idea that you um, you often start with this like massive pool of images and then just have to kind of like slowly whittle it down yeah. from there. So what I brought was like my first pass of images. Yeah. So I love that because um, calling mm -hmm. or uh, whittling down your photos can seem very daunting, mm -hmm. um, especially when you take hundreds of photos. So yeah. would love to hear about your process. 
Yeah, um, so I have like really grown reliant upon Lightroom's rating systems mm. for this process. So um, it kind of, depending on how I feel any given day, generally my first pass is marking them with a flag. So I'm marking them as a, as a pick. Um, so the sh keyboard shortcut for that in um, Lightroom CC is Z. So if I'm viewing them big and just literally like clicking next and going wow, through them, these waves. I mean, they're, it, they're incredible. Yeah. So I had a hard time going through them because I was in love with like so many of them. So my first pass was like, you know, I brought in 93 images. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't need to go through all of them, of course. But um, first you flag. Your so first I flag mm -hmm. and then Generally for the second pass, I start doing stars. Yeah. So the second pass gets one star and then third pass gets two stars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I only make it that far because that's whittled it down enough. Um, sometimes I need like to go three stars or four stars. Yeah. Kind of it depends on what I'm shooting and sort of how much culling I need to do or how similar they are and how hard it is to discern between them. Like this is actually like these shots, because there are so many, and so many that look so similar just from um, from the thumbnails, I think it'll be really hard to kind of make it to the very end. Um, and some, then sometimes the other thing I wanted to say is that um, sometimes you end up with so many photos like this, you just have to like Choose. almost give up and just yeah. be like, you know what, this one, like this one, yeah is, no, see, now I'm already doing it. This one is really nice, and I'm just gonna go with yeah, that. Yeah, I love the composition of this. there are tons of other great ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. What did you shoot these with? So I believe I shot these all on an 85. Okay, so, you can press I. Yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> so it, it doesn't, it's different, oh. Yeah, yeah. it's, oh, yeah, it's okay. different. It just shows up differently. In classic, yeah. it shows up right on, on top. top. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, a 70, I lied, I'm sorry. So I shot this with my 2470, <laughs> so this was zoomed in, yeah. Yeah. This was zoomed in at, at 70. Yeah, but I love the lines and composition of this one. Thank you. Um, yeah, and but I, I feel your pain when going mm -hmm. through. It's like two photos that are almost side identical. Side, like, this one? This, oh, this one. This one. <laughs> this, one. <laughs> this one. Yeah, um, but with shooting waves like this, um, I knew that I really wanted to freeze that action, so I wanted to be yeah. shooting at a shutter speed that was fast enough to, to free, freeze that action. Mm -hmm. So um, even though it was sort of um, fairly bright out, I was still shooting at ISO 640 um, just to kind of keep my shutter speed fairly fast. And yeah. So it's one two thousandth of a second. Yeah. Um, so Joel is talking about um, when you think you have that killer shot and then it's out of focus. Mm -hmm. So how do you ensure uh, that your camera's properly focused when it's a fast moment like waves that are coming and going? Um, so one thing that helps in in this type of situation is that you're, um, you're generally shooting at a, an aperture that gives you a deep enough depth of field that uh. even if your focus is off by like a couple feet, because mm -hmm. it's a distance focus, yeah. um, even if your focus is off by a couple feet, most of your scenes should be in focus. So I shot these at F8. Mm -hmm. um, but like F13 or F16 are very common um, aperture values for landscape photography to kind of ensure things are, are in sh in, um, focused and sharp. Um, and then if you're shooting at like a, in a, with a shallower depth of field, mm -hmm. I would, I recommend, and I know it's not always possible, but I always recommend taking a couple photos and then making sure you understand how to like lock focus on your particular camera um, on the spots that you want is really important. Yeah. Um. I find that autofocus has let me down. So mm -hmm. you just have to um, really uh, be in control of where your camera's focusing. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to move. I do spot focusing and then I, I manually move with the little dial on the back mm -hmm. where that focus spot is in my mm -hmm. frame. Um, and that's the best method for me. So my focus dot is on the thing that I want it to be, that I want to be in focus. Yeah. Um, and my eyes aren't great and I can't, like for shooting something like this, I'm not gonna manually focus yeah, at each yeah, one. Yeah, so fast. Yeah, but for like a shallower depth of field, having that spot focus is really valuable, really important. And on a phone, do you just tap on where you wanna focus? Yeah, yeah. tap and then press and hold to lock it too. Yeah. Um, so uh, this photo is an example of what you, would select. This is, yeah, this is actually one of my favorite ones yeah. from the day. Um, and then if we want to, are we going to do editing now yeah. or, or, or later? Um, or? Let's talk through 
like your process of getting it down to so you do the flagging mm -hmm. and then you go through stars yeah and, and then, then then it would just be like you know i know that the i only made it through like three passes so that's like one flag one star and then two stars so i basically look at two stars um all the images that have two stars and then choose from there and then just i really just start mm -hmm. editing um pick one if i want to like maybe post one on instagram or online um, and just go from there so um, so we can kind of pretend this one has two stars and, yeah. and we can do a little edit. So I generally, um, you know, if I'm in Lightroom CC, pop over to the top right to the editing tools. And I really like, um, they're fairly new. So if you guys haven't updated to the newest version of Lightroom CC, you might not have them yet. But the the new color profiles that have been introduced. Oh, I, you like them? I really like them. Great. Yeah. So, um, Color profiles we launched in, I want to say April, um, and what some technical nerdy background, um, Lightroom historically had uh, what we called the Adobe standard um, profile applied to each photo um, automatically. And we were getting some customer feedback that it, the, the profile was a bit outdated and it wasn't uh, reflective of the current tastes of what a good photo should look like. So. Our um, engineers, the inventors of Photoshop, um, Thomas Nolan team, went into their crazy, uh, you know, Adobe Camera Raw lab and came out with these new mm -hmm. profiles. So it's it's wonderful to hear that you like them. And um, Adobe Color is the default profile applied to any photo um, imported. And then within profiles, there's other options mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and the. The difference between the profiles and the presets is that when you apply a preset, it's shifting a bunch of the sliders around, basically yeah. making adjustments for you. But the profile is really just giving you a new zero. So yeah. it's like a great place to start. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of like it um, because it's kind of a, it's just a nice, easy way to make my photo better mm -hmm. um, that doesn't involve me needing to push all these sliders around and playing with presets and stuff. Um, so I usually just browse through them and you get, it's great that you get like a preview mm -hmm. if you hover, so you don't have to apply them all. Um, I kind of just pop through the different ones and see what feels good. Um, and of course, it's totally dependent on your own like artistic decision, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could take this black and white, I'm sure that um, there are some really wonderful black and white um, things that I can do with it, with the tones in black and white. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like it as a color image for today, so I think I'd like to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. um, the other, one of the things I wanted to note also is that I'm not really, um, I generally don't edit my photos. I'm not, not very heavy handed with yeah. my editing. Mm -hmm. So for me and my photography, I generally just like to enhance what's already there mm -hmm. um, versus like shift the context entirely yeah. or make it too like dreamy yeah. or like otherworldly. That's not not really my style, even yeah. though I have a couple photos like that out there, but generally it's just enhancing it. So even like, this is the base image, and then when I go and hover over the landscape, I mean, look at how it's changed. I guess, let me apply it, and then can I do, I don't know if I can do this, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Before. backslash, I learned this from Michael yesterday, oh, okay. the backslash, because I was always toggling on yeah. the screen but the keyboard shortcut to toggle between the original and your edit is mm -hmm. the backslash. So this is the before, and yeah. this is the after with the landscape profile. profile. Yeah. And, and that's kind of cool. Like it brings out some color in the water, which I, you know, I kind of knew was there, greener. but it, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't show through too much. Oh. Um, and if you decide that you don't want it at full, um, at full strength, where is it? You can always, where's the little slider? I lost it. So some of them some have, do, an, some of them don't yeah. Have. So some oh, of them the main, have the main an ones intensity have slider, them. and then some of them um, don't. So okay. the Adobe ones don't. Like the don't. base ones don't. Mm -hmm. The base ones don't, but let me just show you. If I was to apply one of the more artistic filters, um, like if I liked this one that kind of gives it very cool tones, mm -hmm. the intensity slider's right here and I can slide down to sort of lower the intensity or even slide up to increase the intensity. Yeah. And I really like that it, it's placed right in the middle, mm -hmm. basically, because not everyone wants it to be at 100%. All the way, yeah. yeah. 
So that, that feels really good mm -hmm. to me. I like having that oh, control. See, I, I always edit my photos to look cool. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people, um, like Ben Ward, who um, was also one of our hosts, he's a mm -hmm. talented photographer, um, he always jokes that um, another photo uh, another team member on Lightroom mm -hmm. always edits his photos to look like it is like a warm fall day. Yeah. So um, it is, um, I think it takes a little bit to find what your style is. Mm -hmm. um, and then play, uh, it's helpful to play around with these profiles as well mm -hmm. as presets. Um, like Pei, you said you are, um, more of a realist, yeah. right? When you when it comes to editing, mm -hmm. because um, that's a good thing because you strive to capture in camera what it yeah. is you saw. Yeah. Um, but finding your own personal style, it's very helpful with these profiles and presets. Mm -hmm. And then once um, you use a combination of profiles, and then we can show that you can layer on edits on top. What mm -hmm. you can do um, once you figure out what your personal style is, you can create your own, your own presets, mm -hmm. uh, which is a new uh, feature to Lightroom CC mm -hmm. as as of um, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I see, Leah, you asked about that. Have you ever created your own presets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely have. Um, I've come from like over a decade of Lightroom usage, so since, oh, wow. since the beta in like 2006. Yeah. Um, so I've definitely over the years created my own presets and I, um, have kind of very heavily, I, I heavily rely on presets because it's faster. I don't, it's much faster yeah. and other people, especially if I'm if I'm getting presets from other people, like if mm -hmm. I buy them or download them or whatever, um, if they've already done the work for me, that's yeah. great, right? I just tweak whatever the preset gives me to make mm -hmm. it kind of feel like my own. Yeah. Um, I always say that I want my images to speak before the edit does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want it to look like my photo. I don't want it, you know, Visco presets were really popular for a long time, mm -hmm. but a lot of those looked and felt like Visco presets. So yeah. the moment you open the photo, you could tell it was edited in Visco. Yeah. And that's like the last thing I want with my yeah, photography. I want a photo to, to yeah, stand out. Yeah, yeah I want it to be known as my photo. So I've mm -hmm. created my own, um, and I love that presets are now available, um, and preset syncing is now available in Lightroom CC. Yeah, so um, what's very cool is um, these profiles and presets are available wherever you are. So we're on the desktop now. Uh, we can pull out the phone later and you'll see the same profiles and presets. Um, but if you make your own preset, um, what's new is those um, presets that you create are also synced. Mm -hmm. So that um, makes your editing faster. Um, and then also, whenever you're just on the go, you can just go through, like after calling mm -hmm. this down, you can just go through and apply apply your custom presets mm -hmm. and um, you know come back to the edits later. So how, yeah. how else would you edit this photo besides so, adding a profile? One, one thing that I would consider doing is um, adding a little clarity. So clarity is essentially um, adding mid-tone contrast. So the end result is um, that your image looks a little bit sharper, yeah. a little bit more, um, well, it's a little bit sharper without being crisp, the mm -hmm. way that sometimes using the sharpening Sharpen, slider yeah. can can result in. So um, I might add clarity um, to add a little bit more detail and mm -hmm. texture into the water. Um, I personally like to use my up and down keys because I feel like I have a little bit more control than when I just slide um, because I think I can pull that mm -hmm. too much pretty easily. Um, what I might do also is um, apply a linear gradient from mm -hmm. the left because I feel like it's maybe a little bit on the bright side on the left. So I'm gonna click on the linear gradient and kind of. So linear gradient um, is a selective edit. So what these editing sliders that Pei was using are global edits, so it applies to the whole photo. And what she's doing now um, is applying a linear gradient to only adjust that portion that she, um, I don't know if we want to show it again. Yeah, so what I did um, was I clicked on this tool on the top right, um, like four or five icons down. That's a linear gradient. And what I did was I pulled it, I'll just do it from the right and I won't keep it, but I pull it in from the edge of the photo. And essentially then I can do things like I'll do a really drastic just so that you can see. I've pulled exposure down just where that gradient has been applied and now I'll pull it up so you can see. Yeah. But essentially that means I'm targeting that edge of my photo as mm -hmm. the part of the image that I want to apply my edits to. Yeah, and this is 
um, what I think the mark of a, a, a photographer is um, being uh, not so heavy handed with global edits and yeah. editing what needs to be edited. Yeah, it really shows through when you do something like um, increase saturation globally when yeah. there's a person's face in it or something yeah. like that. It kind of throws the whole image off. Um, and I just wanted to say really quickly that if you hover, if you pull a gradient or do any sort of a selective adjust, um, the hover, hovering over that point shows you a red overlay that is essentially telling you what part of your image you're affecting. So mm -hmm. that's the piece that I'm affecting. Um, and because this was just for demo purposes, I'm just going to delete that one. Um, and I will do a quick plug and then go through some of the chat pod. Um, questions. Mm -hmm. So the challenge, make sure everyone check, checks out the challenge um, tab within the Adobe Live uh, screen um, and, and experiment with batch editing in the new mm -hmm. Lightroom CC with three of the five photographs provided. Um, the prize is a Creative Cloud Photography plan for one year, including one terabyte of storage. So um, pretty great prize. Uh, make sure you um, check out the challenge and submit, um, you know, try some of these edits that Pei is going through. Um, and we'll also show you how to batch edit when you're done editing this photo mm -hmm. for those of you that don't know how mm -hmm. um, to copy and paste your edits. Um, and then we had a few questions. Um, how do you create a preset? So uh, Rachel, great question. Mm -hmm. We will, um, how about we finish edit editing mm -hmm. this and create a preset with your edits sure. and apply it to the next photo? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would have to agree Tim, the Tim is Tim in, in the room actually. Yeah, um, where's Tim? Where's, oh, oh, Tim's okay. in Germany. Um, that yeah. Clarity is one of the best lighters, but it is often overused. I think it's really easy, especially when you're first getting into. It. I think that it's a very common problem for new photographers is yeah. that you get really excited about what the tools can do, um, and you overuse them. Yeah, I mean, I know I was guilty of it as well. Um, and I think that's one of the things that you sort of learn yeah. as you grow as a photographer is knowing, knowing when to stop. So mm -hmm. like Clarity, for instance, I probably would never apply at more than like 20. Wait, yeah. It, yeah, 20 or two. What, well, depending, it, I, I, I know a lot yeah. of portrait photographers that really amp up the Clarity um, to give Which that Which is like, like the worst. Yeah, yeah, I know, as a, as a someone that doesn't want to appear that I have wrinkles. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> what amping up the clarity really like defines the lines mm -hmm. on your face. Mm -hmm. um, and then the wonderful thing though about um, the adjustment brushes and the, the, like, the selective adjust mm -hmm. tools is that you can apply clarity, like I could take a photo of you in front of this like wonderful brick wall mm -hmm. and adjust clarity on every part of the photo but your face. Uh, yeah. So that's a nice, nice way to use the tools that we're yeah. given. It sounds like Ovan does that too. Yeah. Whenever I use the clarity tool, I always use a brush. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's um, advanced editing, very cool. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so beyond that, let's see, what would I do to this? Um, I might see what, um, I like having black blacks, even though I don't know if it actually needs it in this photo, so sometimes I just, I might pull it down to see what it does. And that, I do kind of like that contrast that it gives me. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, honestly, I, you know, like I said, I'm, yeah, I'm not really light. into adjusting too much. So, yeah. um, so what, what I... You, what I'm, did you do as a recap? What did you do sure. on the left? Um, you brought down the exposure? I brought down the exposure ever so slightly just to pull these highlights down. Actually, mm -hmm. and I might do a global um, highlights down a little bit. Um, let's see, I don't know if I want my, sometimes I try it and then I see if I like it. So I'm going to hit that backslash button yeah. to see the before and the after. So, I mean, it, I didn't do much to it, but it actually already looks much different. Yeah. So I might kind before. of leave it at that. Oh, it honestly. looks great. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's just sharper, sharper it's more detail, more contrast, yeah. um, more saturation. Um, and then, you know, what I might do actually, I know what I might do is I may go into my color, oh, here it is, my color panel. And um, I learned this yesterday that um, I forgot that it's not in um, CC on desktop, but the targeted adjustment tool on mobile is really great for something uh, like this. Yeah. Since I don't have it, what I might do, um, what, since I don't have that tool in CC on desktop right now, what I might do is 
Um, I might go in and see if I can play with the color of the water. Because it's kind of green, um, it may be a green that I, I don't want. So I may just see what pulling my green hues does. Like this way pulls it very drastically for just so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. Pulling it down makes it much like yellower, orange. I definitely don't want that, but maybe, you know, do I want it to be greener? I don't I don't know, maybe blue. And so I'll I'll just kind of play with it to see what these sliders give me. Mm -hmm. Um to see if I want to kind of change the like I the like base the tones. Yeah. yeah, I kind of like it bluer as well. I just need to find kind of a good yeah, a and good place to land. And hi everyone um, that's joined new. I saw Lena, Tom, um, Shani has some great questions and um, Ovan wants to know, do you think that we are in an era that we over edit? Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, um, why do you think that is? I think it's because of things like Instagram, yeah, honestly, and everyone wants that um, cool analog style, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you guys are interested, we can show you how to mimic that uh, without a mm -hmm. filter, right? It's it's a lot of um, tone curve. Mm -hmm. um, and you might. I'm not good at curves, so I'll oh. let you take the, I'll tell you take the wheel for that. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I definitely think it's um, there are trends when it comes to photography, and yeah. I think for the last you know seven years since Instagram has been around, we've been um, really falling into this, uh, the trend of applying filters mm -hmm. to our images. And thankfully, thankfully now the tools that we're given, like Instagram and whatever yeah. other editing, third party iPhone or uh, smartphone editing tools, um, we're given intensity filters or sliders yeah. so that we can lower the intensity of the filter so we can have like a little bit of that Instagram filter, but not 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so I think people are getting better and better at it, but it's certainly easier for beginning photographers to just apply a filter and call mm -hmm. it done. Um, so it enhances your photo without you needing to learn how to do the edits. Yeah. So I definitely think we've fallen into that trap and have been there yeah. for a while. Um, it's a great starting point even for those new to photography, um, I saw Rachel's um, not a photographer and new to Lightroom. Um, it's a great starting point using profiles and presets mm -hmm. and playing with the intensity, similar to how you would apply filters. Uh, but watching Pay and how um, minimal your edits are, it's, it's very, um, you know, you are very intentional with your edits. Mm -hmm. um, and for what I would love to show people is if you hover over, let's say, um, the highlight slider. Um, because these terms might be new to people. Um, if you hover over any of the sliders, um, a, a definition and then an example pops up. I'm not doing it. Oh, so. It was, I get it sometimes. So hover over the word highlights. Yeah. Ah, uh, so, okay. Yeah, so um, it's not showing up for you because Lightroom knows that you use it a lot <laughs> and you, you don't want annoying pop-ups. Yeah. <laughs> but for those that are new, mm -hmm. um, this is great because I know when I first started experimenting um, and playing with my edits, it was very daunting, you know, even these basic terms like exposure and contrast and highlights. So um, what you do at any moment if you, um, you know, don't know what a slider does, I would encourage that you just play, you know, slide it all the way to the right, slide it all the way to the left, see what happens because every edit in Lightroom is non-destructive, so you can always revert. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you can hover over these sliders and see the definition and see a little animation of what happens. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are two things that I wanted to say about editing yeah. in general. Um, so the first is really simple, and, uh, and that's um, just because the slider exists doesn't mean you have to use it. Yeah. I think that's really important to know. Like, the tools are there should you need them, um, but for on most photos, you're not gonna, there's there's like probably not a single photo where you'll apply every single slider. So don't yeah. think that you need to. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that for the most part, when I um, teach people editing, I always recommend doing the comparison like I did here of the before and the after toggling back and forth between the before and the after really shows you how far you've come. And oftentimes what you'll realize is that you've taken it too far. Yeah. Because like I said, you get really carried away with the sliders and mm -hmm. what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, that, um, 
Sometimes you just want to you... tone it down. Sometimes a when bit. I do that, I, I'm mm. like, oh shoot, the before looks much better than the yeah. after. Yeah. I need to tone it down. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's just like basically your before is your zero percent and your after is your filter your edits at a hundred percent and oftentimes you don't need them to be at a hundred so you just want to tone them down to like yeah. 60 or 70 mm -hmm. and you'll end up with a photo whose edit can really withstand the test of time it's it'll, it'll be a photo that you think will look good five yeah. years from now mm -hmm. um, whereas sometimes when you apply too heavy of an edit it's definitely it gives your photo a dated feel. Yeah. And and you're not happy. Like I look at the stuff I edited a long time ago and I, I wish I had edited it differently. So now I know and I try to avoid that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so this one, very minimal edits, but it's a very drastic difference. So mm -hmm. it's um, a great um, example of, you know, you don't need to use every slider. Yeah. Um, let's, um, Let's create a custom preset and apply it mm -hmm. to the next photo. It might not work, but just to show everyone how to create a custom preset. It might not work. Wait, why might it, why, why might it not work? <laughs> um, well, because we applied a, um, it will work, but it may not apply, you might not apply it to every photo. Because oh, I you see, have I see. A, Because you have a gradient on the left. Okay. Right? Yes. How do I, how do I make a preset? So if you scroll this is, down. I'm sorry, it's still very new to oh, me. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's, it's new oh, to everyone. So, oh, there it is. Yep, there we go. go to preset. Um, and then user preset. Ooh. What is test preset? Oh, I uh, think I made Did that. you make one? Made... Okay, so if you go up to um, okay. photo. Oh yeah, create right, okay. preset. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up. I'm sorry guys, because the preset stuff is still. It's new know, to everyone, it's, it's a new, new feature <laughs> that we just launched a few weeks ago to um, create a new preset. Yeah. Create a custom preset. So if you go down at the bottom right, and hit presets, it expands this panel here. Mm -hmm. Sorry I have that really awful test preset. That was that was my test for yeah. like, can I do this? Yeah. Um, at the top you have these three dots and you can create preset. And what I wanna call it, I'll call it waves. Yeah. And you can basically select which of your edit panels you want it to copy. Mm -hmm. um, Tools, are, and tools are just like, wait, overall editing. We'll just apply it all, honestly. Yeah. Actually, what I might not want is the, um, I might not want the, the linear gradient. Oh yeah, I think you can expand the tools. Um, yep. Aha, uh -huh. yep. okay, so I don't actually want that. All right, mm -hmm. cool, thank you, I didn't see those there. Okay, so now if I save that, It'll show up here under user presets. And then what I can do is say, navigate to another photo. So this is another photo sort of in the series that I took. Mm -hmm. And then I can just hit waves and literally apply. So boom, that's done, boom, that's done. Which is really cool and yeah. it's so easy and nice. Um, and then I'll turn it, so that's a easy way to quick in your workflow, mm -hmm. um, especially if you know you're gonna be taking lots of photos of waves in the same location. Mm -hmm. um, another way to apply the edits um, is through batch editing. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna. Yeah, I was just gonna do that. Yeah. So just like And this is our challenge. Selecting. So um, for those that don't know how to batch edit, um, pay attention and, and participate in the challenge. I think there's about um, 26 minutes left. Um, so what? Mm, cool. Yeah. So all I did was I selected um, a bunch of thumbnails along the bottom, and what I want to do is I'm going to see what that preset looks like, um, and just kind of touch it, mm -hmm. and then see that it gets applied to all of them in the batch. Yeah. Did it work? It didn't look like it worked actually. Um, so another way you can do it is just um, copy. So Control C. Mm -hmm. um, a photo that is edited, and then go along and select a few and just control V. Oh. What does it say? A note about... In detail view, the paste command only affects the current photo. Oh, command shift V. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'm learning this alongside you guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is brand new, so yeah. uh, real... Real time. Real time. Right this is what mm -hmm. happens when you live broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, that's interesting, actually. That so, and I'm used to the way Classic works, right? Mm -hmm. Which is when you 
um, select them all, you can hit the preset and it's applied to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that functionality just isn't there yet? Um, that's great feedback and I think mm -hmm. um, it's something that uh, the team probably has thought about. I don't know why um, where we implemented it only this way for now. And mm -hmm. I know someone uh, previously asked, um, they're used to seeing the history panel mm -hmm. in Classic um, and they don't see it in CC. And that's correct, the history panel is not in CC. But um, you know, this is a new product and so mm -hmm. would love feedback from those expert users like you um, and I, I forget who it was that said it in the chat pod, but it, it's yeah. great feedback. Um, you know, photographers want the history panel, so we're, we hear that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the batch, a new, nuanced, yeah. nuanced um, batch editing, like yeah. you said, where you just are, can select all and apply the preset. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important to remind people that this is a fairly new tool for yeah. Adobe, and it's one of those um, situations where like you can't wait for a product to be perfect before shipping it, yeah. right? Like you have to ship it, get get people using it, um, and then continue to iterate. So for me, the, you know, it was announced in October of 2017 and I started using it right away. Mm -hmm. um, but there were tons of features it didn't have and literally every couple weeks, Adobe is updating it, yeah. updating it, updating mm -hmm. it, and I teach classes on it all the time. I remember you were teaching and a I class, and I was I was just observing she in the was back, observing in my class and making me nervous. But <laughs> um, it was really like I didn't realize that a feature that I said, oh, you know, right now it doesn't do this. They had just introduced mm -hmm. like a few days earlier. So yeah. Lightroom CC is being built and iterated upon so quickly that yeah. it's really hard to keep up. And this is one thing that I learned from Julianne Cost in mm -hmm. one of her classes because people comment this all the time, like, oh, Lightroom CC is terrible because you can't do this and this and this, or you know, whatever examples they had. And what she said is that when Lightroom itself, Lightroom Classic, when it first shipped, it didn't even have a crop tool, which <laughs> yeah. is kind of crazy to Insane. think about. So um, it's not that these things are never coming, it's just that they are coming in time. Yeah. So that was, that, that was good for me um, because as somebody who, um, you know, for a lot of my images now, be, when I used to shoot weddings, the batch processing was incredibly important yeah, to me. Yeah, we, we heard loud mm -hmm. and clear from uh, wedding and event mm -hmm. photographers that, you really need uh, that yeah, they can't mm -hmm. use Lightroom CC unless there's batch editing. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we added it in to this yeah. latest release. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah, going so, through one by one. So what I was going to say is that when, when I used to do wedding photography, I really needed those batch edits. But mm -hmm. now that I don't, most of my edits are one off. Mm -hmm. And I really spend time with each and every one of them. So I, I use batch editing far less these days. I, if at most, would like copy and paste, mm -hmm. which is why I didn't even realize that feature wasn't there in, in the way that it is in Classic. Yeah. Um, because I'm just not doing that as often. Um. And I know the the chat pod has been moving along, but Shawnee's been um, asking more about um, if it's incorrect to use Photoshop versus Lightroom, or when you would use one versus the other. And mm -hmm. um, there's no wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, Lightroom is just optimized for instead of Photoshop is a, a file format. You know, it's one photo at a time, and um, Lightroom is multiple photos, mm -hmm. and you can manage all of your photos in one place. So it's just how you um, prefer to edit your photography yeah. and how you prefer to manage. Yeah, and I think Lightroom is, is easier for people just getting started. Um, Photoshop exactly. has like thousands of tools yeah. um, compared to what Lightroom has to offer which is really just the streamlined things that you need specifically for photography. Mm -hmm. um, and if you feel like you do want layering and um, more uh, intense edits, um, like doing compositing and stuff like that, um, you can always start in Lightroom, get your base mm -hmm. file to look the way that you want it to, mm -hmm. and then open it in Photoshop and then do whatever other processing you want to it. So yeah. you can work use the two in tandem. Yeah, I say Lightroom is for enhancing and editing, um, and Photoshop it's for if you want that like creative um, expression to really manipulate your photo um, mm -hmm. into something either otherworldly or adding something that wasn't there, taking something out. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, Hasim asks, how do I undo an edit? Control Z, does that work? Yeah, Control Z. <laughs> yeah, Control Z, um, yeah. and then also, 
you'll see that um, if I scroll back up to my sliders here, um, for instance, so everything, because I applied this preset, all of my sliders have been adjusted based on what that preset told it to do to this mm -hmm. photo. But for instance, I'm looking at this one and it looks too, it's too dark to me. So um, my exposure slider is at minus six, uh, 0.63. So I don't need to really undo it step by step. All I can have to do is just zero change it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if, if you want to do something like zero it out, um, like for instance, highlights here is at minus 41. If I want to zero it out, I can just double click on the circle and it'll pop it back to zero. So that's like a really nice shortcut to it. Um, but I actually do want highlights down and whites. I want my whites to be down. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of I love pushing. This, this, this prism that showed yeah, up in the photo. Yeah, it's really, it was really cool to get that, um, mm -hmm. the rainbow effect. Oops, sorry, I'll close that. Um, but the, the nice thing about Lightroom, is, you know, because it is non-destructive editing, you have control over those, those sliders the, the entire time you're working within a photo. Mm -hmm. um, so you can, you can just change them at any point to, be, yeah. to reflect what you want them to be. This is a beautiful photo. Thank you. Um, yeah, okay, so I guess I have um, some other, I mean, we have, we have tons of wave photos, so we could talk about wave photos all day. <laughs> um, oh, actually, one thing I wanted to talk about is long exposures. And actually, somebody very early on asked if I ever use filters for my um, landscape work. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't get to talk about it then, but I'd love to talk about it now. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of landscape photographers really love using filters, and I, it does help to enhance what you're shooting and getting in camera. So, a circular, oh, filters on your camera. Yeah, yeah. Not filters yeah. in editing. Not, yeah, yeah, sorry. We're backing up to like yeah. the shooting stage mm -hmm. now and, and leaving, talking about specific edits. Um, so do I ever use a filter on my camera mm -hmm. when I'm shooting landscapes? And the answer is yes. Um, landscape photographers especially, I think, really heavily rely on things like circular polarizing filters. Mm. Um, and what that does is really sort of react to the light that's available in a given scene. And yeah. it can either enhance things like reflections and make them much more visible and stronger or even cut them all together. So if you're shooting glass or on a lake or something and you don't want a reflection, that polarizing filter can really help to eliminate it. Ah. Um, and it also can also help to like really define and enhance your like the contrast in the sky. So yeah. like big puffy clouds look wonderful with mm -hmm. polarizing filters if the light is right. Um, do you travel around with multiple filters? So if I know that I'm gonna do a lot of landscape stuff specifically, mm -hmm. yes, I, I will. Um, these days, honestly, I don't because I, I don't find myself doing landscape stuff too much. I yeah. think it's something that, you know, is probably good for me to just have in my bag at yeah. any point in time. I, I mean, think it's I've, light. It's yeah. light, it's yeah. small. I've just fallen out of the habit of mm -hmm. it over, over the years. Um, but the polarizing filter, in addition to helping to manipulate the light, also helps to cut a little bit of light. So it enables you to do longer exposures mm -hmm. when it's bright out than you would be able to otherwise. Um, but it's fairly limited in the amount of light it cuts. So you um, might want to consider if you're getting really into doing like long exposures and stuff, um, using something like a neutral density filter, okay. which is basically like a dark filter. It just yeah. like cuts the amount of light that is hitting your sensor. Um, so sometimes they have them, you know, ranging in sort of darknesses. Mm -hmm. So some you can just, you can see through, they're just kind of gray. Yeah. Um, but then they get darker and darker. So I have one that's like a minus 10 stop mm. ND filter. So it's basically like cutting 10 stops of light out. Um, so when I look through it, it's just black. But what it enables me to do is, um, is shots like these, um, which are long exposures. Uh, Tim says, neutral density equals sunglasses for your camera. Yes, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Tim. Um, so, oh wow. essentially, this is still daytime. Yeah. And I, actually, these are some, this is like probably one of my favorites. It's, this is an, um, my sensor on this old, this is an older camera that I shot this on. My sensor was very dirty. Um, and when you're shooting at a really, high aperture, you're getting so much depth of field that you really see all the dust on your sensor. So in my final edit, I would definitely eliminate all those spots around the edges. Um, but what you see here is something like, this is a, this is a six second exposure, mm -hmm. but it was also taken 
in the daytime. Oh, really? So, yeah. So what the neutral density filter does is eliminate enough light uh -huh. that your camera sensor, your, or, well, you can enable your shutter to stay open for a lot longer mm -hmm. um, without blowing it out, right? Because if you look at my settings, I shot at ISO 100 and I was at F22. So that's basically maxing out like how much light I can cut out with camera settings alone. Mm -hmm. So in addition to that, I needed the neutral density filter to cut the light more so that I could leave my shutter open longer yeah. and get this like super, super smooth water effect in the daytime. And have you been able to mimic this type of photography with your mobile phone? Yes. You yeah. have? Mm -hmm. There are apps like Slow Shutter. Um, I think if you Google or look in the App Store for mm -hmm. Slow Shutter, there are probably multiple apps called Slow Shutter. Mm -hmm. They all essentially do the same thing, so you can kind of play with them. Um, but I can do this, I can do a photo like this on my phone and I don't need a neutral density filter because it's all sort of mimicked in software. And that's that's yeah. the reason why I said that I could get better results sometimes with my phone shooting landscapes than my DSLR because in software it's enabling me to do things that are um, sort of just a much more difficult achievement on a DSLR. Yeah. Um, you really have to know, be intentional when you're on your DSLR. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to be intentional on my phone as, yeah. as well, um, but it's definitely like I needed a big tripod and mm -hmm. I needed the neutral density filter mm -hmm. um, and I needed to do all these things that um, would enable me to get this, but I could have my phone on a normal day when I'm walking out and about and yeah. I could say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna have lunch on the Embarcadero and mm -hmm. do a slow shutter shot like this on my phone and I don't have a DSLR with me. I can prop it up on the railing mm -hmm do a slow shutter shot, get something like this on my phone mm -hmm. um, on a day when I wouldn't have been able to capture at all. Yeah, and um, so tomorrow, this is great fodder for um, mobile photography, which we'll be mm -hmm. covering tomorrow. And um, I think it'd be very fun if we walk through the, the tech preview in Lightroom Mobile of yeah. the um, lawn exposure yeah. to mimic this type of slow shutter speed. Mm -hmm. um, something that novices uh, may not know is when you're taking this type of lawn exposure shot, you do need um, a tripod or something stable mm -hmm. to um, to set your camera on so that it's mm -hmm. very still. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I can talk about tomorrow. I can even I'll bring even bring in the little iPhone tripod. That oh, I, I don't use. have one. Yeah. How big is it? Can you uh, travel with it? It is uh, basically the size of my chapstick. Oh wow! So I can put it in my pocket. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I it's need to invest great. in one. Yeah. Um, so this one, this is the original. This it's, is the original, yeah, beautiful. in camera. So I didn't do anything, um, thank you. So if I want to do a quick edit, what I might do is pop over to my profiles. I want to see actually what black and whites look like. I, have, I haven't decided, you know, I haven't decided yet. Oftentimes I can tell in if advance if I want it to be black and white or not. Mm -hmm. But for this one I don't really know because I kind of like the subtle blue in the original, so now that I've kind of looked at some of the black and whites, I don't know if I like them, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I want to do something like enhance the blue. Actually, this one is, wait, is that? So we have, so um, as, you're, as you're going through these sure. profiles, just to let everyone know, there um, is 11 minutes left to submit your challenge, and um, we'll do a quick copy and paste batch edit again to show everyone, but that's mm -hmm. more, um, you know, 10 minutes is more than enough time to select three photos and apply a batch edit. Um, pop it into a Spark and submit it. Um, and you have the opportunity to win a Creative Cloud Photography plan for one year with one terabyte of storage. So that's um, originally $19.99 a month. So it's, it's a pretty awesome prize. Um, what I'm doing here, I applied one of, I applied I, that Adobe Landscape preset, um, amazingly, also oh, wow. uh, worked really yeah. well for Can this we one. Can see it before and after? Yeah, Click so open. before, after, and so what I did was, once I applied the landscape um, profile, I lowered the saturation just slightly, because it was a little too blue for me, like a little too fake blue. Um, and then I increased clarity to 15, and then what I'm doing now is, it looks a little bit like some of my tones are getting muddy on the rock and in the shadows. So to kind of prevent that, I'm going to push my shadows up a little. Um, mm. And I also want to still make sure I have blacks. So I might, 
I often find myself taking blacks down and shadows up just to kind of add a little contrast mm -hmm. and separate the, those tonal values. Um, and I'm gonna see if an, a, a, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust brightness to look good on the rock, but it's too bright on the top right. So I'm gonna pull a gradient down. Um, and when would you use a linear versus a radial gradient? Um, the linears I've been relying on today because most of my edits are coming in from the edges. Yeah. So if it's something that is like, you know, the bottom half of your photo for like a horizon sunset kind of shot, mm -hmm. um, linear makes a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. Anything from the edges. And then if, um, <laughs> sorry, my friend Jonathan's commenting. So oh, that's, I'm guilty yeah. of center spots. Yeah. We can, we we'll can do show that. that quick. We'll do that after. Yeah. Um, but if I if I want to do something like adjust only the um, like if I want to make just the rock in the center brighter, yeah. I might use a radial gradient. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I'll show you this, but just as an example, that's what you could do with a radial gradient mm -hmm. in a much more refined way. Um, but I'm not going to use that now because I already got what I needed with the linear. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see before. After there's a little bit of a lag, so it just oh sure yeah. No. So before, before after oh, so wow. just kind of like again it's subtle it's mm -hmm. like I haven't really changed the context or content of the photo very much it's just making colors pop a little making it a little bit sharper a little bit more contrasty. Mm -hmm. What I love about your edits is you're enhancing the subject you're not taking away from the viewer's mm -hmm. focus on the subject, yeah. uh, which over editing can sometimes do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I might also um, do a crop. Um, oh, yeah. I might just like crop because it is, I don't want to lose too much of the photo, but I also want to see some of those rocks in a little bit more detail. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of kind of wasted space, uh, I think. That's nice. That's a, that's a lot nicer. And then yeah. to get rid of these, so bad. So this Jonathan called out, good John eye. Thanks, um, Jonathan, <laughs> for pointing out the, my flaws. <laughs> it's so hard to avoid dust spots. Yeah, and, and like I was saying, because I was shooting at f22 here, really in, it, everything is in focus. Yeah. So I can shoot at, you know, 1.8, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't see these spots. But they all come out when you shoot landscapes um, with really deep depth of field, depths of field. So what I did was I went to the right side and I selected the healing brush over here. Mm -hmm. And what I'm gonna do is just paint over what I wanna eliminate. And you'll see that it gives you a source, like it ha it sources from somewhere. So like if I, I could put it on the rock and it would source from the rock. Um, but I just wanna make sure it's like roughly sourcing from what I want it to copy. Mm -hmm. um, and then otherwise, like with the spots, it's fairly easy. I can literally just like um, stamp them out. If you want to make your brush um, smaller or bigger, it's a two finger drag up or down. So the shortcut instead of having to, oops. To go over to the right. Instead of having to go to the panel and be mm -hmm. um, very specific about it. Um, and then let's see, I'm sure there's more. I had to go out of the tool so I could easily, more easily navigate around the image. I'm, I'm much more adept at doing this um, on my phone because <laughs> I use Lightroom Mobile so often. So but, there's yeah. about five minutes left for the challenge, um, which I challenge anyone to do the challenge in five minutes. I think you can. Um, Jonathan can. Jonathan, <laughs> for, um, that's your um, penalty for calling out pays dust spots. That's, that's right. <laughs> um, but just grab the photos, apply a uh, batch edit to three of the photos and plop them into a spark. Um, and ha um, you have a very high chance to win CCP for one year. Oops, sorry. I closed that by oh, accident. Oh, I love when you zoom in the detail that you see under the Yeah, mirror. isn't that incredible? Like yeah. how much sharpness is maintained in mm -hmm. a six second exposure. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. I just, I love the style of landscape photography um, with the um, the long exposure, super smooth water. Man, yeah. there are so many spots on this. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, you guys wanted the raw files to be brought in, so yeah. that's what I did. That's the magic of raw as well. 
mm -hmm. is that you can um, manipulate and remove these spots and these center spots without um, pixelating your photo. Yeah, and you get to see all my secrets. You know, I feel no like no one's perfect. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like it. I mean, it's kind of cool to see where an image has come from and how far it goes. Yeah. Um, I love seeing people's before and after edits mm -hmm. um, to this day, even though I feel like, you know, very, sometimes very jaded mm -hmm. in photography. Um, I still like seeing what people do with their edits. But yeah, I mean, we don't have to do all of them, of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Let's see the before for this after. one. But before, after. Wow, yeah. Yeah. So it's great, and in, and the healing the healing and cloning tools are fairly new in CC as mm -hmm. well. Yep. So it's really nice to have those as, as well. Yeah, and those um, healing brushes new to Lightroom Mobile on um, iOS and Android as well. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'm practicing. You know, it's a little bit hard. We can go over it tomorrow in the mobile mm -hmm. photography segment to um, precisely paint yeah. the the uh, part of the photo that you want to heal. Yeah. Um, let's um, just very quickly copy and paste this to sure. the photo on, um, oh, I don't know if you have multiple in this series. I do, actually. I have this one that's a different crop. So I've copied and now I'll paste. So that, I mean, that was simple, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we could see what it looks like on this. Oh, the well, lighting is very different, too. so pasting kind of works well. It kind of does the same thing, so before and after, just like a little brightening, a little contrast, a little sharpening. Yeah. Yeah, a little saturation. Um, and in the in the batch edit, what um, you had selected was to not bring over the selective edits, like the linear. Um, yeah. So, you know, those... Because it's so specific mm -hmm. to each photo. Um, so what I did really quickly, if anybody was watching, I basically pulled down a linear gradient from the top. So I wanted to bring down, because the brightness, it was like too bright on the top. Um, and yeah, so kind of pulled down. Let's see if I want to do another. I can bring in one from this side as well. So you can, um, with any of these tools, you can keep overlaying them on top of each other and have multiple linear and multiple radial gradients, um, which is really handy. Um, I'm just going to pull up the submissions while you're showing some more edits. Sure. Yeah, I, all I'm doing is, you know, while while I have the time, kind of going through and taking care of some of these dust spots that are still present. So when we have the submissions, what do we do? Uh, we will review the entries and then um, you will select the winner. Okay. Yeah. So how much time do we have before? A minute and 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I can show some other, let's see if I have any in that minute. Um, I have some images that like, you know, examples of when you have an image that you really like, but you feel like it needs just another little something something to make it better. Um, taking control of the scene and just doing, taking it from this to my next image, which is this. And these again are not edited, so I would probably brighten it up a little bit so you could see it more clearly. Um, but it's a nice, you know, landscapes, you can't always interfere with what's going on, but you can add your own personal touch somehow. Um, so for this one, I had a friend who was with me throw a rock into the water. Um, I captured the splash, but um, my goal was to actually get the splash, oh, wow. but what I liked better were the ripples that fell, um, that came after the fact. Um, and then I did the same thing here. I was, um, this is here in, in, in the Bay Area, um, in Point Reyes, and it's this like very popular sort of tunnel of trees that's shot all the time. I was there at, at, at sunrise for the fog. It was so fogged in, it was beautiful. But then I was thinking, you know, it looks like every other photo of this that I've ever seen. So what I did was I had my friend drive the car straight at me and shine the lights. Oh, wow. Um, so that it just kind of, it's something that differentiates this shot from my shot, from like the rest of the shots that people take there. Yeah, I think um, something that I struggle with as a beginner mm -hmm. is that I take a lot of the sh like I'll show some photos to family and friends, um, mm -hmm. and people are like, "Are these stock photos?" Oh, <laughs> because really? they're just—they look 
the, yeah. the same shot that the lots of people shots. are taking. And I think that the other thing is, especially like, I, I know we're not tra talking about travel today, but that same idea of like taking travel photos that look like generic, they belong in like a guidebook, like Lonely Planet or something like that. Like mm -hmm. nothing against Lonely Planet, but those shots are not necessarily super artistic. They're just like, I am showing you literally what's there, period. Um, and what I like to do is take a, give it like an artistic inspiration or interpretation. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, I want to hear more about this shot, but I, sure. I, I, mean, I think I'm, it's I'm good to move on. It is the challenge submission deadline. Yeah. Um, and Jonathan was able to get it um, a good. submission in another <laughs> five minutes. My husband is rooting him on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I think what we'll do is go over to my screen can I, and okay. um, go through the, the submissions. So um, Paco or Gus, how do we know who's is who's? Because um, and then we'll figure. Okay. So if everyone's ready, we're going to review our submissions. Thank you for all of our uh, participants for submitting the, these beautiful Canada photos. Paco, thanks for taking these photos of Canada. And uh, we'll go over them one by one. Mm -hmm. And Pei, um, we'd love to hear your feedback as we go through these. So am I giving feedback on the photography or on the the, is this the Spark pages? Um, so feedback on the edit. Mm -hmm. so, on the photos uh, themselves, on yeah. the edits of the photos. On the edits of the photos, yes, because everyone had mm. the same photos. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I was going to say, man, everybody, you guys are calling yourselves amateurs, and these photos are, like, amazing. <laughs> Paco, did you hear that? Your photos are amazing. Good job, Paco. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So the um, challenge was to pull, there were five photos provided, um, take three of them and apply a batch edit, so similar edits to all three photos. Mm -hmm. So here is the first entry. I guess this is the top one. Okay. Okay, so it looks like um, a linear gradient was pulled down on the sky, mm -hmm. um, which I think works for like this particular image that we're looking at in the middle, but it's almost, it feels a little uneven on the bottom image. But I think it, it looks, I mean, the edit looks good and I see where you're going with it. Um, what I might do is try to kind of balance out that sky by lowering the brightness on this bottom left corner as well. Um, and I would, I would, I mean, I guess it's a, it's all, you know, the tricky thing about critiquing people's editing is that it's always a personal choice. Yeah. So what I might do is you know, I almost feel like the ground is a little, I don't know, is it too, it looks like it might be a little brighter than I would want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I might pull a linear gradient up from the bottom and to lower. To exposure? Yeah, just like tiny, tiny bit to make it look a little bit more balanced overall. But again, I, I look at this and I'm like, actually this could be a totally normal scene in real life because sometimes the sun shines through the clouds yeah. in one spot and mm -hmm. not in another spot. So that's kind of what it looks like to me. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, this, I mean, this first in, entry is um, Nilton, man. And Nilton, if you're still with us, let us know um, if we are. Oh, there's another photo that needs to load. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Oh, this is a nice photo. Yeah, these look, I mean, the edits are wonderful. They, they look enhanced without looking fake um, and without going overboard. Yeah. So great job, Nilton. I love the basic edits. You know, you can tell you, um, I, di I didn't see the originals, but um, the contrast looks nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's sharp. Um, but Nelton, would love to hear from you. Did you apply the linear gradient up with your batch edits too? It looks like it on yeah. the top. Yeah, it looks like it's on all of them. Yeah. Uh, but this is, um, Nelton, thank you so much. Love, love your edits. Let's mm -hmm. go on to the next one. Oh, can you refresh? We can do the next one. Yeah, we'll do the next one. Um, maybe the moderators can let me know who's I skipped on accident. So yeah. here's the next one. Yeah, so Nilton said yes, he did and apply the linear gradient. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think it was like, I think it was perfect, except that um, might need to be applied on different images in, in a different way. So that's all I would have to say about that. So um, here's our next one. Um, same scene, 
It already looks very different. Yeah, it looks totally different. Yeah, wow. It's crazy that you guys all started with the same base images. Yeah. Oh, this this participant oh, nice. was um, very helpful in adding what their edits were. Yeah. Thank you for the descriptions. Um, I don't know what that's... Who's saying that? Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, okay, so... This um, how many ba how many base images were there? Like five, five. to choose from. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so this is this is really interesting to me. Um, the colors, I think the the overall tones feel really good. Um, I it's think it's really fun to see people's personal styles. Like yeah. this, I don't know if we want to go over to the previous uh, Nilton's edits, but this is yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Here's the same photo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's cool and it's yeah. like high contrast, lots of blacks. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one, um, you know, the the custom tone curve you can definitely see. And then uh, playing mm -hmm. with split tone, you know, mm -hmm. with the tones of the colors is um, mm -hmm. really a nice use of edits to reflect your like personal style. Yeah, and this one you can tell that the like the blacks aren't all the way black the way that they were in Nilton's. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot more sort of like mid mid tones overall, and then like a color tint, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. I think it looks um, it looks less realistic. Um, it looks like it's been edited, and you know, like you wouldn't see these colors in real life. So, but maybe he saw them in his mind. Yeah, and, that, and that's totally fine. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm not critic Joshua. Not, not criticizing yeah. it at all. Just saying that it's um, like. You know, yeah. One person's edit can differ differ so much from mm -hmm. the next person's. So, like, um, a very realistic looking edit that Nilton did versus who's this? Joshua. Josh. Jo Joshua. Joshua. Um, versus this more like artistic interpretation mm -hmm. um, of the scene. This is more like a dream sequence, right? Yeah. It looks it looks different. Like you would sort of imagine this in your mind, mm -hmm. um, even though you kind of know that colors don't look like that in real life when you're yeah. out in nature. Uh, but it's fun to see the edit applied to all three photos um, where you get that consistent tone, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, I think that, and this is actually a good time to point out that one of the advantages of applying um, this batch processing to the same set of images is so that you end up with a final set of images that are consistent in tone and feel throughout. Yeah, that's, that's really cohesive. important. Yeah, yeah, it's a cohesive story. It's like a, really great for like photo essays and stuff. You don't mm -hmm. want it to be, you know, putting, you know, interspersing Nilton and Joshua's photos. I think would look weird, right? Yeah. Because they their edits are so different. Mm -hmm. But like, all one edit is great, one way or the other. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see someone's cohesive look. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the next one. Um, oh, yet again, another another look. Mm, yeah. Um, and then, so this is actually a good example. Wait, did whose photos are these? And did you apply a batch? Did this you is, batch process them? This is uh, Mahul Anand. Mahul. Uh, so Mahul, thank you very much for your entry. Yeah. I love the greens in the top two. Mm -hmm. um, if you're still with us, did you apply a batch edit to all of them? Yeah, because it, it looks to me like, you know, the top two are like have green, like a lot of green tones and cooler tones and the bottom one. Um, you can just see by comparing the what green. the green looks like in each of the photos. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom greens have much more yellow in them and overall much more warmer tones. Mm -hmm. So it could have been could have been like a batch preset, but then like an adjustment in like yeah. uh, white balance or something like yeah. that. Because um, the, the sky looks much warmer as yeah, well. Yeah, the sky looks very different. So I think this is a good example of um, images that I think I would continue to work on to um, make feel more cohesive overall, right? Because yeah. each edit feels fairly different from another. Thank you, Mahul. And then here is our next participant. Wow. Ooh. I love to see everyone's entries. They're so different. Yeah. This one huh. looks like a lot of oh, this playing is, with tones. And yeah, I was going to say, this is really fun. This is this is one where you know that the photographer or the person who edited this 
didn't need or want it to look like reality, right? Like yeah. you're distorting reality, turning things upside down, um, really being liberal with your edits, um, mm -hmm. and just having fun with it. And I think that's one important thing to remember that you can do with Lightroom. Like, yeah, you can experiment mm -hmm. and play. Yeah. Um, you know, one person's style is not always yours, so just keep playing. Yeah, is this um, Claire? This is Claire Cross. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. This is so playful. It's, cool. it's kind of fun. I like, and I like the text overlay too. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, is the text done in, in Spark. Spark? Okay. Yeah. Because you can't do text overlays in Lightroom. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You so can do things like add a watermark. Mm -hmm. um, can you do that in CC? Yes. Okay. Um, somebody asked very early on also that I didn't, and I didn't answer because we were talking about something else, is um, do I apply watermarks? I, I personally don't, um, but it's very easy to do within Lightroom if you're, if you're interested in doing that or have, um, or if that's important for you when you present your work. Um, so thank you, Claire. Let's go to the next one. Oh, cool. Yet again, another take. Yeah. I love everyone's different takes. Mm -hmm. I like... Um, so whose is this one? Um, Fortune? Fortune Cohen. Yeah. Um, thank you for submitting. Yeah, this is really... I, l I love all the different Spark options, actually. Yeah. It's really cool to see what they are. Um, so this is done in Spark Post, where you can lay out and then mm -hmm. add. Uh, you know, do kind of a lay out and then add text. Mm, cool. Um, okay. That was Claire talking nice. about the previous one, yeah. Um, what I would say just for this one is like um, looking at the difference between the top two images, one feels a lot darker than the other, and it could just be because like the sky is much more predominant and um, there are more highlights in the sky on the one on the right. Excuse me, but really just being thoughtful about um, when you present those side by side, looking yeah. s looking to see how they look and feel side by side. Like, do they feel balanced or not? Mm -hmm. Compared to the bottom one, I might want to brighten the top left one a little bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, or no, darken the top right. Yeah, yeah. But then I think even you oh, know I, these two. I, yeah, yeah, the I top left and the bottom one compared to one another are, are very, very different. different as well. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. love the greens. Yeah, um, the green. It's like you're kind of embracing the greens and running with them. Oh. Um, a contrast filter. Oh, yeah, that oh probably no. affects some of the brightness. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you? Fortunately, did you play um, with the color mixer, the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders, or did you use split toning? Um, would love to know how you achieved the the different hues and tints in the in these photos. Yeah. And we can, while we'll, we wait yeah. for that, we can come back. And here's the last one. Ah, Jonathan. He he rose to the challenge. Oh, nice. These are um, like softer contrasts, so I think you can see the detail. Um, a lot of that detail is maintained, which is really nice. Um, and then cooler tones throughout um, overall, which is nice, but like overall much more realistic. Mm -hmm. um, this is again one of those like more realistic, like not too much of a departure from the norm type edit. It looks yeah. like there might be a linear Another. gradient here, right? Yeah, there might mm -hmm. be. I was wondering that too because it's kind of hard to see um, because the contrast isn't as different. So it does look a little bit brighter on the bottom left, the same way mm -hmm. the first one um, that Milton did was as well. I think one more photo probably needs to load. Oh, yeah. Oh no. Where is this? It? That is it, but it's probably, I think you would see that, yeah, linear gradient batched onto all of them. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I don't know if there's another one, so. I guess we can take the hero image and these two into yeah. consideration. But thank you, Jonathan, yeah, for your um, under the gun submission. Yeah. So um, let's review the um, I think we got five total, right? One, two, three, yeah, six. 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 Yeah, because one of them, wouldn't, I don't know if that was another one that wouldn't load. So here is the first one by Nilton. Mm -hmm. Cooler tones, mm -hmm. nice contrast in blacks. Um, forgive me, I forget everyone's entries, but we'll just breeze yeah, through them. Sure. Um, there is this one, complete different take mm -hmm. on the colors and tones. There's this one, um, which 
we uh, were curious about the bottom photo mm -hmm. and the batch yeah, edit. I don't think we got an answer from that. And the fourth one, this playful green one. Mm -hmm. the number five, also take on greens. Mm -hmm. And um, this last one, mm -hmm. just more photorealistic. Mm -hmm. So. Hey, I'll let what's, you. What's what, what is to be done at this point? Is there like a decision that needs to be made? Yeah, you select a winner. Oh, and we, and they win a Creative Cloud subscription, subscription. for one year. This um, is kind of being put on the spot. Wait, take take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one thing that I was gonna say between like, I'm sorry, these sliders are oh between this one, um, like Claire and For Fortune, I think. Um, is that the by turning the top two images upside down, what it did was give you a nice solid border across the top, mm -hmm. um, and you can really feel the difference between that one and this one, where there's the border is kind of just more like the open sky still. Yeah. Still, so there's something to be said for both of them. I think yeah. that's kind of cool. Um, I think. I don't know, I guess when you ask somebody like me who likes natural edits to, yeah. <laughs> to choose, um, I I think I would, I mean, I like the, the two that have the very natural looking and feeling edits. So the first and last? The first and the last. Um, so I think that I personally would have edited them to look more like this. So I'll probably, I would probably have to go. Is that your final answer? I guess, don't, yes, yes. I can be the tiebreaker. I also okay. love I also love Nilton's. Okay. So Nilton, congratulations! Um, you have uh, been selected as the challenge winner, um, and yeah, and we will message you on Behance. Congratulations! So you win a free year of Creative Cloud photography with one terabyte, um, and thank you so awesome. much for your submission. So um, yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, everyone thank you everyone. It's, it's very fun to see such different takes on editing. Mm -hmm. um, but let's let's go back and we have, um, we have less than... Uh, like 10 minutes or so? We have less than 15 minutes. Um, yeah. I would love to go continue with this photo that you were showing sure. us before the challenge. Yeah. Um, and then if anyone has any last minute questions for pay and landscape photography, mm -hmm. uh, please some submit them in the chat pod and then we'll be back tomorrow, Pei and myself, mm -hmm. to talk about mobile photography. So we'll get a lot more in depth, um, go through some mobile edits, um, go through editing your mobile photos on desktop, mm -hmm. just really get in um, the heart of, you know, what you love. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so if we come back to this one, I know that I got a comment. So what I was showing you is really kind of taking it from this sort of like very natural, but undistinguishable from the um, every other photo that you see from this place and going to something where I've had a hand in it. I know somebody made a comment that, you know, like it's interesting or something, but it doesn't look natural. Um, my goal was not for it to look natural. My yeah. goal was for it to have this almost like supernatural, otherworldly element it. To looks it looks like you woke up from a dream and yeah. you're like hazy. Like it's this weird like, I, I don't know, um, like something that you don't want approaching you, coming at you, oh. um, which is kind of it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah. And I I'd say even. Um, what do you focus on when you take this photo? So that was that's, somebody asked that as well earlier. Mm -hmm. um, like, where do you place your focus for something like this? Um, and I would say that in general, when you're when you have a, a deeper depth of field, the the specific spot you select matters a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, so for this one, I probably had it um, right about um, at this point where the trees are kind of overhanging yeah. right in the center. That's nice. Um, so for me, I knew that the car was driving towards me, so that distance was changing. So I didn't want to focus on it, mm -hmm. and I also knew that it was going to be blurry just by nature of the fact that it's lights shining mm -hmm. through fog. So I wanted to put, uh, put my focus on something that's solid and not moving. Um, so I guess in selecting... And it nicely frames, like very clearly. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of like a you know frame within a frame, right? Mm -hmm. I think I like this one more um, than maybe one of these because this one, you know, it, it's it becomes less special when you know yeah. it's a car. Um, and honestly, I have to say, I shot this on my iPhone as well. And on the iPhone, because there's not as much detail, what ended up happening was that it's it was one solid glowing light, which um. I kind of even liked better. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that um, I would select this one because um, this one, you know, shows too much. Oops, sorry, shows too much car, and it's like almost too far back. I it's, like it's this real. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. the slightly zoomed in version mm -hmm. of it um, where the distance is kind of compressed. Yeah. Um, so again, I always kind of start by just browsing through some of my, um, the profiles that are available to me to see if there's any of them that I like. I don't know, I've never, I don't think I've ever tried looking at this in black and white. It's kind of a very different oh, feel. Cool. Yeah, so I just, I always- I always prefer color photos, yeah. but. Um, yeah. I know it's a personal preference. Yeah, I think I, I want to keep this one in color probably. What ends up happening, um, the reason, I do, I do edit in black and white fairly regularly, but it's usually images that are much more structural or geometric in nature mm -hmm. where color doesn't matter at all. Um, and yeah, the, the profiles are all free, right? Yes, yeah. um, these are all free profiles. Um, you can now add thir third-party profiles to uh, Lightroom CC as well, and those will sync to desktop, mobile, and web. Where do those come from? Where do you get the third-party ones? Um, so I, I don't know if you know Max Munch. We just worked with, so anyone that creates presets, mm -hmm. um, you can download them onto your computer, and then if you go up into um, photo. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, and then. Oh, I apologize. It might be. And you're talking about now how to like how to import them? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just curious about how like where would I even get it? Oh a yeah. So if you profile. if you decided to create uh, presets or profiles, mm -hmm. um, you could um, you know make them available for download anywhere, mm -hmm. and then anyone can download them and add mm -hmm. them. Import so they them work. In. The profiles work like presets do. Mm -hmm. So I could. I could make, because I know how to make presets by moving my sliders around, and mm -hmm. then I have that. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Is that So does it work to the make your own profile, you have to uh, know mm -hmm. about lookup tables. And, okay. Yeah. So uh, what I'm talking about is presets. You're right. Yeah. Good, good distinction. You can create your own presets mm -hmm. and import them. But the profiles are all free. Um, there's um, a select amount of presets that are also included in Lightroom CC, and you can add third party ones. Mm -hmm. Jonathan's giving you suggested okay. edits. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Clarity, yeah, so if you go down in clarity, it adds to like a glowy, that glowy, hazy feel. Um, and dehaze, generally, if you go up, it tries to get rid of mm -hmm. the fog, and since we want the fog, oh, I pulled it. We can, we can yeah. add I went too more far. haze. I don't, see, that's what happens when I drag instead of tap the mm -hmm. thing, so. Before. Wow, After. yeah. It's a great um, example of adding haze. Yeah. Good call, yeah. Jonathan. I don't know if I would have thought to do that. <laughs> so that's perfect. Um, and then I had, you know, a couple of these. Like, it was the same morning. Super, it was super foggy that morning. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of like these. I did, actually, I edited one of these um, before, and I ended up with a black and white edit on it because, um, because it just kind of made it feel mm, more yeah. like dreamy. Uh -huh. um, so really, again, it's just such a personal choice. Mm -hmm. um, when I teach editing, I like to teach, I like to say, this is what the tools can do, and it's up to you to determine how you want to actually implement them mm -hmm. in your own editing. Um, and it's it's so subjective, so yeah. yeah. Are these, these are, shot on your Nikon? Or? Uh, these are shot on the Nikon, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mark, mm -hmm. for your question. So is this the same series as the wave? It's different. It's different. It's a different day. Yeah. Yeah. So this is these were it was shot the same day as these basically. Uh, how early do you have to get up to get to capture oh, this? Well, this was sunrise. Like I knew because usually what happens often in the Bay Area, the the fog burns off, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to get there early. So I got there um, at sunrise, uh, which mm -hmm. was probably I think at the time like 7 a.m. and it's like an hour north of San Francisco. Yeah. So I left it before six, I think. I probably woke up at five. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a rare occurrence for me. 
And we can talk more about timing of photos tomorrow during the mobile photography mm -hmm. um, session. But thank you so much for everyone for joining today's landscape session with Pei. Um, and I'm Michelle. Mm -hmm. And next up, we have um, Tiny Atlas Quarterly with um, Tyson and Ashley. So um, they are behind us in the studio getting ready. So stick around um, and be sure to check them out. And we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you.